and welcome to the channel um, we are going to start building our infinity app and um, one of the first things we're going to do is uh, I like getting it out of the way is just uh, getting all the all the various packages that we, we need to use in our app they're not very many uh, they're about four I think so we could just go over that our app is currently running on VS code on the simulator to the right and on the left I have uh, just uh, the run-of-the-mill startup project for Flutter so I just have a random the, the usual startup project so what we could do first is we could come to the pubspec.yaml the pubspec.yaml and um, and here we first come and remember, the PubSet with YAML is indentation sensitive, so you have to get it right. Uh, one trick you could use is just align it under the Cupertino icons, like so. And uh, next, we go to pub.dev. Now, since we are hitting an API, the first and um, the first package we need is HTTP, uh, so it can hit our API and essentially get get. Um, get the JSON. It's going to get JSON back. So we need to install HTTP, which is, I, I'm guessing, the standard when you're using uh, HTTP. Well, there are other packages you could use, but we'll use HTTP. So you get this, you copy, and we go back to our Android Studio, and we put it in the, under Cupertino, like so. And then after that, the next, uh, the next app we need uh, the next package rather not app is cached image network cache cached cached or cached i don't know it depends on which side of the pond you land your english from so the cached image network which just um returns and lo and saves the cached images using an SQ sqf light uh, on the local device it saves us a bit of bandwidth so that we don't have to constantly fetch them and for that we get the cached image network is 2.00 currently so we would take that and we would come under here and do that and after that we are going to use an image inkwell and um, transparent image the transparent image just returns a transparent image like the name says it's pretty basic we'll use it in the details page where it will give us a transparent image over there so we are going to say transparent image like this it's an underutilized package but it it does a job it does a job um we could come to installing copy this uh -huh, like so copy come back to our pub spec do that and after that we have image inkwell we have image ink well like so and image inkwell is yeah it's also uh mm, it gives you this effect uh pretty simple so we would copy that okay let's just get the copyright uh oh how come it's not copying let's do that and come back here and Voila, like so. So we have gotten, um, these are the four packages we're going to use in our app. And um, we hit pub.get or pubget or on VS Code. Okay, uh, yeah, you, you can also get it on VS Code, I believe. Um, I prefer using Android Studio. So we have gotten all the packages we need and we'll be using them progressively as we go on with our app. And we will continue and we're going to start working on our models today. We will work on um, our models and use the plugin to fetch essentially hit our API and fetch. No, yeah, we will go to our API, get a JSON, get the model, and um, describe the how what the JSON will look like to that so that you can convert it into a map and a list, make it easier on ourselves. Okay, let's get to that. So um, we're going to continue the app and um, we're going to use a REST API, of course. And um, a REST API is just a URL to a server which allows you to retrieve and also post data. 
So there are various methods. Um, the one you'll do the most is get, which retrieves data. There's also post, which is used for saving data to the server. And um, there's put and uh, delete. Put is for updating and delete is, of course, for deleting. So the API we're going to use, the API in question, actually is, um, if you go here and look for Heroku, if you go to Google, um, I'm using Ecosia, which is, a, I believe, a plugin that allows you, that um, allows you to, uh, hmm, how do I describe it? Ecosia plants trees uh, the more such as you make, so it helps the planet um, just by searching. You could help the planet. It's a good, it's something you should look into. And their searches are also pretty decent. You always find what you're looking for. So, for example, I have two trees. Anyway, that's a side note. Just um, include them, add them to your, put them on your on your browser or your search engine, actually. Use it as your search engine. Uh, it's called Ecosia. Yeah, so if we look for Heroku NASA Apple API, we would come here and we would find Heroku NASA Apple API. I believe it's this one. It's it it uses the NASA Apple, which is a, it shows you a pic a picture of the day. I believe. What does Apple API mean? What does Apple mean? Apple stands for it's the NASA API Astronomy Picture of the Day. Apple Astronomy Picture of the Day. Yeah, but the thing with the Apod is that it requires you to have to register and get a what's it called? Get a key so that you could make uh, you could make calls to the API. Um, this one is actually faster and you don't actually need a key and it's a bit easier to use, right? So we'll be using um, we'll be using the API and this is the information about the API. So for example, you can see this is an example. Of an a of of the API and you that we will use it uses the it's basically the same uh, yeah so for example we could uh, in particular I'm going to use the count five here it suggested um, five so this query will return five random apods and if you astronomy picture of the day if you look at here we have one two three go up go up go up wait wait it's lazy loaded because we're using a future builder uh so yeah so it uses five so actually api is going to also have a count of five and if we refresh you'll get the same five new pictures so this query when we hit this api returns five random apods now there are many ways um json of course is a uh, is the uh, stands for javascript object what does it go it's called javascript object notation i believe yes javascript object notation um it's basically what you see in this array this is a json so it usually has a key and a value pair and the key is usually a string um yeah the key is usually a string and this uh, the value can be multiple things like yeah so can it only be keys okay a bit foggy on that right now. I'd have to check it out. But um, basically, this is what we're going to be passing. And um, there are many ways you can pass in jar in in Dart. Um, you could uh, pass out the key value pairs by hand if you wanted, for example. And um, or you could use serializers, a build serializer. Uh, there. Are, there are various packages that you could actually use to pass the JSON. I believe um, there's, I think one which is really, there's one called JSON annotation, which is pretty popular. Uh, wait, let's just look for JSON annotation. JSON underscore annotation. Annotation like this. Um, JSON annotation is pretty, it's pretty good and um, we could use it uh, and JSON alongside JSON serializable and the build runner, which would run the JSON serializable. Uh, the serializable just creates extra 
extra helper classes that will help you convert strings into your models you could go this way and there's nothing wrong with this but one way i recently read about and i tried it out and it worked marvelously was to use a plugin a plugin saves you a lot of time and effort now how to get a plugin is um if you come back to android studio and fortunately i don't know how to do it with vs code uh, I, or rather i haven't even looked into how you do it with vs code so let me just say that um, if you look online, I'm sure there is a method on how you can do it. But what you would do in Android Studio is you come to Preferences, click on Preferences, and basically where you would have Flutter, and you'd come to Plugins, and you could see I have Dart, Firebase Services, Flutter, and JSON to Dart. So just search for JSON to Dart and install it. Now, after you install it, that's when you can start using it. And I'll show you just how easy it is to, to create a model class using the plugin as opposed to using annotation, the build run, and serializable. Okay, so first things first, we would come to the lib folder or the lib folder and right click and create a new dot file. We can call it models like so. And after we do that, wait, how come it didn't? This has been happening to me of late, where I create a file and it doesn't show up for some reason. I have to create it again. We could say, call it model, hit enter, and... Okay, there. Seems to be working now. Now, okay. Um, how we create the, the model is simple. We would come to, um, to code here, and we hit generate, and we type on create data classes from that and we give it a name of NASA and we come back to our API and um, we click on one JSON object you can pick one you can either pick one um, any of these uh, and yeah there's an instance of just one like here we can just pick this one like this which has all the information so we hit copy we go back to our uh, to our vs code we put it here and we just hit generate voila and everything has been created we have a from json uh, a from json method factory method that will allow us to convert the the for example a nasa object into JSON and also convert it from JSON like I believe there's a from JSON yeah so here we can convert it into JSON and here we can convert it from JSON so basically that's that um, you can see that it's a lot easier than the other methods because we have all the all the um, why, why is it complaining? Lower, come, okay, it's okay, fine. Yeah, so we have string, we have copyright, no, we have a pod site, we have copyright date, description, HD URL, image thumbnail, media type, title URL. So basically, this is it. We have a constructor here named constructor. So we actually we have everything, basically. We don't have to sweat too much. Which I think is, is pretty cool and that is the importance of using the, the plugin. Uh, you don't have to run a build serializer. You can also do that, but I, I don't think it's, um, it's, it's required, essentially. Um, yeah, so we have done everything, I believe. We've, we've created the model. And now it is our job to use the model. We are going to use, for example, HTTP, um, the HTTP method, uh, HTTP package to actually hit the REST API and hit get. And yeah, basically that was uh, the, the beginning, or rather that's this video. We have created the, the app, we have um, created the model, where we have used the plugin, I've introduced you to the HTTP will be uh, the REST API I will be using, and we can continue from there. Thank you. As always, like and subscribe.